in both SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric, you can create mechanisms. Those are assemblies where you have components with degrees of freedom. They're capable of translating and or rotating. In this video, I want to show you some of the differences and similarities when you are creating assemblies with rotational degrees of freedom. And here I have in SOLIDWORKS a robot finger with two rotational degrees of freedom. Let me orient you to my model. Here I have the first component. This one is static. Then I've got the middle joint of the finger. And then I've got the final joint of the finger. If I use my left mouse button to click on this, you can see that I can drag this through the range of motion of the robot finger. So I'm going to show you how I create this in SOLIDWORKS and then we'll take a look at the same thing in Creo Parametric. Let's start off by creating a brand new assembly. I will click on the new icon and right now assembly is chosen. That's good. I will click the OK button and my new assembly is started. I have the begin assembly property manager. Here it shows me that I have an open document. Well, that's not what I want. Let me choose the browse button and I'm going to locate the first component that I want in here, which will be this component. And I'm gonna do them one by one just so that the wrong components don't end up static. If you take a look in the tree, you can see that there is an F in parentheses. This component is fixed. So that's good for this one. Let me move things aside. Now I'll bring in the other components. Let me go to insert components and then let's browse once more and go through my folder and let's find the next part that I want in here. Let me use the control key to grab both of them and click the OK button. And then let's put this component here and then this component over there and they have minus signs in parentheses indicating that they do not have any mates in them. They're not constrained in the model. And before I start assembling them, let me use the rotate component just to grab some of these and move them approximately how I want them oriented before I start adding the different mates in order to locate them where I want. Just want it a little closer to their final position. Let's hit the check mark to complete out of there. So in SOLIDWORKS, you add the mates at the assembly level sort of as features all at the same time. To create a mate, you can click on the mate command. It's symbolized by the paperclip in the ribbon. And now we have the collector for selecting what we want to mate. And so for the first one, I'm going to select cylindrical surface over here and then the cylindrical surface over there and adjust the locations of the components. And you'll notice that concentric is automatically selected since I picked those two cylindrical faces. That's good for the first one. Let's hit the check mark to complete that one. For the next mate that I am going to do, let me go to the advanced mates. I'm going to use one in here called a width mate. And this is something that exists in SOLIDWORKS, but you don't have an equivalent in Creo Parametric. With width, you're going to select two pairs of flat planar surfaces, and then it'll find the mid plane between them and then it'll make those coincident and you can even add in a, a little separation distance or offset distance but anyhow for the first component let's select this flat surface and then i will left click on the other surface and it automatically goes to the next collector one thing by the way i am not holding down the control key that's another little difference that you would have compared to Creo Parametric. Let's select, I'll use this flat surface in the second component and rotate over. And I think, I think I can get to the surface that I want. If not, you could drag the component. And now we have the constraint. It is centered between those two different references. So I like that one. Now I want to throw in a, another mate that allows me to control the rotation angle. Let's hit the check mark to complete 
that mate. And to control the rotation angle, I'm still going to use an advanced mate, but I'm going to use this one over here, which is called the limit angle mate. So I will click on that and I'll select this surface from that component. And then let's grab, there's a little flat sliver of a surface that I want over there. And you'll notice that it adjusted the location of the component. It is now putting them at a separation of 30 degrees. And I don't want it to go all the way to 30 degrees. I want it to sort of kind of simulate the motion of a human finger. I'm going to change that to 135 and hit the enter key. Just get a little bit more of opening between those two flat surfaces. For the limits right now, it's got 135 for the max and the minimum. I'm going to change those values. Let me position and change this to 90 for the minimum. And let's position my mouse. Let's delete. Change that to 180 for the maximum angle. And that's good for that. Let's hit the check mark to put that in there. Now I'm going to add in the other ones for the third joint in the finger, the other mates. So let's grab cylindrical surface here and cylindrical surface there. Let's go to the standard mates and make sure that we're going to get a concentric mate. That's good. Let's hit the check mark. Once again, I will go to the advanced mates and use that width mate. And so for my selections, uh, let's use... Now I can grab this flat surface and that flat surface with the left mouse button. Then for the other component, let's use this flat surface and this flat surface. And it adjusts to center those surfaces. Now for the angle, let's hit the check mark. Then go to our limit angle once more for the mate selections. Let's see, these components are the same color, makes it a little tricky, but I can do it. Let's pick the small sliver of a flat surface, and then this flat surface, and wow, flipped it all the way over to 30 degrees measured that way. Let's see if I can uncheck the flip dimension. So there it has more of the 30 degree that I want, but I don't, it's measured in the right sense, but again, I don't want it going to that severe an angle because again the human finger should not be able to do that and my robot finger would have interference if it did that so let's set the minimum value to 90 and it's got the maximum value at 180 that's good for that let's hit the check mark and so those are all the mates that i want let's hit the close button to get out of the property manager for adding mates. And now if I want to test the range of motion, hey, I just grab the surface and you can see that I can move it through and you can see how it is articulating. So the big differences or the things I want you to note from what I did for creating this is that we have the mates folder and the mates folder were created after placing the components in the assembly and I took advantage of concentric width and limit angle mates in order to get the rotational degrees of freedom that I wanted. So now that we've seen how to do this in SOLIDWORKS, I'm going to jump over to Creo Parametric to show you how to do it there. Okay, here I am in Creo Parametric. Let's start off by creating our brand new assembly. I will click on the new icon and then let's give it a name. This is going to be robot finger and it's like the fifth finger. I will use my default template. Let's click the OK button and oh, I've got my datums visible. I am not going to need these. I'm just going to hide them right out of the tree. Now let's use the assemble button to bring in our first component. Let's grab this part. And now for the very first component, let me start off by turning off my planes really quickly. One big difference between SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric, with SOLIDWORKS you sort of bring in the components and the first component is automatically fixed at the origin. 
Well, with Trio Parametric, you bring, bring in the first component. You can add constraints if you want. You can also use the default constraint, which will align the default datum planes of the component with the default datum planes of the assembly. It aligns the origins together to one another. And now to complete the placement, I can either use the check mark or the middle mouse button to finish that one. So that's good for that. Now let's bring in my second component. Let's click on the assemble button and grab the middle joint to the finger. And I'm going to reposition it a little. And by the way, as I'm looking at this, I'm realizing that when I brought this component into the SolidWorks assembly, I actually brought it in upside down, but that is okay. All right, so now instead of adding constraints for this component, I can use a predefined constraint set called a connection. If I go to the connection type dropdown list, here are our different predefined sets of constraints. And the one called a pin allows for one rotational degree of freedom. So I can choose that. And now I'll pick the two axes or cylindrical surfaces that I want to line up. Let's grab that and that. And that positions it. But you can see from the 3D dragger, we still have a translational degree of freedom. And another difference, as I mentioned earlier, between SOLIDWORKS and Creole Parametric, SOLIDWORKS you have that width mate. Well, one way that you might do it in Creole Parametric, you might use some datum planes. So for example, I happen to know that I have some datum planes going down through the middle of these components that I want to align. So I will select the two of them and they are made coincident, but you can actually change that to a distance if you wanted some offset value between them. Now, in order to control the amount of rotation between them, let me turn off my planes to unclutter the screen, we can click on rotation axis. And this is sort of like when I did the limit angle mate in SOLIDWORKS. And so for the different references, I can pick this flat surface in the first part, this flat surface over there. And we are getting, right now it's measuring these based on how it does the angles. So we're getting like negative 40 degrees. Let's change this to negative 45 and it adjusts it. And so if you want to play around with the range of motion, you can see, you know, as I drag it in here, let's go back to the rotation axis. I can drag and I can see, okay, in this particular case over here, I want it to go between a minimum of zero and actually minus 90 to zero. So let's set those different values. I'll say that our maximum limit is going to be zero and the minimum limit is going to be minus 90. And then for the current position, I'm going to set this to minus 45. And you can also make this what's called the regeneration value so that whenever you regenerate the, the model, it goes back to this particular angle. But this is good for me. I'm not going to enable the regeneration value. Let's hit the check mark. So we've got that component in the model. Now let's bring in the third joint to our finger. I'll use the assemble and grab the component. And let me make sure it looks like it's not oriented the way that I want. That would be better for how the finger should look. And let's just again use the 3D dragger just to get a little bit closer into place. And once again, we add our constraints when we're placing the component. We don't add mates at the end, sort of like as assembly level features. Let's go to our connection type. Again, for one rotational degree of freedom, I will change this to a pin. And let's pick our axes, or in this case, our cylindrical surfaces that we want to line up. And let's move the component aside. And rather than using planes to eliminate translation, this time I will pick this flat surface and this flat surface over here. And again, coincident works for these two, but if I wanted to, I could use a distance between them. And then for limiting the range of motion for our rotation axis, let's use this flat surface and that flat surface. And right now it's giving us negative 18 and you can 
use a little dragger to see the range of motion for the finger. And once again, I can say that we want to limit, or excuse me, enable minimum and maximum limits. And I'm going to have a maximum uh, or max minimum of minus 90 for the range of motion and then zero over here. And that's good. Let's hit the check mark. And then to test out the range of motion, we can use the drag component. I can click on here. You can see how I'm moving it within the range of motion that I want. And so there you can see a comparison of adding rotational degrees of freedom to components in assemblies in both SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.